Hi guys, I've got a quick video here to show you. Um, a couple of weeks ago I was looking on the internet on one of these electronic forums where um, a couple of people talk rubbish and then everybody believes them. And um, some guy put a question in, he got, um, he got a circuit board and it had a dead short on and um, he was asking a question, is there any way to find out where the short is rather than keep taking all the components off? And um, some guy actually um, answered the question he said there's, uh, there's no way you can find the short without taking individual bits off and testing them. Well, in this video I'm going to show you that's an absolute load of rubbish. Now if you look here, there's a little instrument I made, it's a milliometer. it measures millionths of an ohm, which is a lot lower resistance than your standard analogue or even your standard digital meter will read. So I've set up a little demonstration. Here we've got a piece of radio spare strip board. On it I've soldered five uh, 10 microfarad multi-layer ceramic capacitors. Four of these are brand new and one is dead short. I actually took it out of a Sony 46 inch TV the other day I repaired. So I've soldered on five caps, one of them is short. Now um, if you believe what you said on the internet, this guy is saying you have to take every one off until you find the one that's faulty. Well, I'm going to show you with this tool. So we'll just get it switched on. And um, the idea is you take a measurement at one side of the board. You take a measurement at the other side of the board. And the side that has the lowest resistance will tell you what side the short's on. And then you just go down the individual parts looking for one, one with the lowest reading. So we'll turn on my homemade milliometer. And um, there, we're all good to go. So first I'm going to take a measurement from this side of the board. Right, now that's reading 374 milliohms. So I'm going to move to the other side of the board now. Take another measurement. And that's reading 294 milliohms. So first of all, that tells me that whatever's faulty, whichever of these caps are faulty, it it's further to this side, the faulty one, than it is this side. So that's the first test we do. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test each one individually and we'll look for the one with the lowest resistance. Remember, the meter's saying that whichever one's faulty, it's more on this side. So we'll start with the one to the other side first. Right, so that's uh, 376 milliohms. Now move to the next cap. That's 326 milliohms. So you can see the readings falling. And we measure the next one. That's 280 milliohms. The next one along again. That's 233 milliohms. So the reading's still falling. Move to this one here. Ah, now that's 293 milliohms. So the resistance between there and there has actually gone up. So I just double check. We've got 290 milliohms there. 282 milliohms there. And there we've got 233 milliohms. Now that there is the lowest one of the, all the lot which indicates to me that is the faulty one, that one there. So if you turn the board over, you'll see I wrote faulty behind that one there. Um, now just to prove that that is the faulty one, I'll put that on there. We'll take a measurement from this end of the board. If you look at the, I'll get it in the camera, if you look at the ohms meter there, that's got zero ohms, it goes right that's infinity, that's zero, that zero there indicates a dead short, so we put that on there, that's indicating a dead short. Um, I'm not going to sew this cap, we're going to just snip it off. Like that. Put the meter back on there, and see straight away the dead short's gone. Try from that end. Yeah, the dead short's gone. So that is the faulty capacitor, um, and that is how 
when you've got a circuit board with lots of different parts in that's how you determine which one is faulty by measuring millionths of an ohm um, now i'm gonna i'm gonna show you another little demonstration on the vestel tv and um this is another um, advantage of a milliohm meter. Um, I don't know if you know the best LTVs. They've got three diodes in parallel. Um, only one shorts out, not all three of them. But you've got to desolder all three to determine which is the faulty one. With a milliohm meter, you just take a reading across all three diodes, and that will tell you which one's faulty. So we'll just move that out of the way. That's the Vestel TV with 17 IPS 61 power supply. Um, it's completely dead because one of these three dials in parallel short circuit. Let's put the meter there so you can see it. So you've got short there, short there, short there. That's with an analog meter. Um, for those of you who prefer to use a digital meter, I'll just show you on this one. Yeah, meters in the camera. So we've got dead short, dead short, dead short. Now these three dials are in parallel, but only one's faulty. So what we'll do is take a reading across that one first. That's uh, 103 milliohms. Take a reading across that one. That's 101 milliohms. Take a reading across that one. That's 106 milliohms. The one with the lowest reading is the centre one. 101 milliohms. So we just snip that like that to make it open circuit. Measure again. There you go, short's gone. And um, for those who prefer to use an analog meter, I'll just show you the analog meter. Make sure I've got meter in the camera there. Yep. That's the diode reading because it's shocky diode, very low resistance. There you go, no short. So the middle one, that's the one that's dead short. So the milliohm meter again has picked out of the three diodes in parallel, which is actually a faulty one. Right, okay guys, um, I'll let you have a quick look in this before I um, close the video. Uh, made this about 10 years ago um, it's very simple it's mains powered um, two by four wire kelvin clips that is an absolute must these when you're measuring very low resistances um, just an on and off switch on the front i'm gonna hold the camera right there we go. that's an off switch see it's all ready to go um, it's plugged in the mains mains powered there and um, take the lid off there we go it's all built on bureau board um, didn't cost a lot of money to make about um, probably 20 pound well 10 years ago it's probably uh, 20 pound or less worth of parts and um, you can actually buy these commercially um, but it probably cost you about 400 pound for a commercial one and um, there we go so if anybody tells you that you've got to remove individual parts on the circuit board to uh, find what's short it's an absolute load of rubbish okay guys thanks for watching and um, i hope you enjoyed the video i've not made many videos in the last few weeks because um, i've been very busy at work but uh, subscribe for more at a later date okay goodbye